Brooklyn Independent Television. From the head to the heart. We often hear people say, my heart was going a mile a minute, or I felt like my heart would burst right out of my chest. This can happen just before someone has to make a public speech or right after a roller coaster ride. But as Health Beat Sherry Carabin tells us, when it happens while you're sitting on your couch watching TV, it definitely should not be ignored. Any arrhythmias, any extra beats, skip beats, palpitations, anything no, you like? None at all. 64-year-old Diker yeah, Heights yeah, resident just, Eugene Mazzola has yeah, tachycardia. Simply put, that means his heart beats faster than what's considered to be normal somewhere between 60 to 100 times per minute when a person is at rest. It could be uh, a normally rapid heartbeat or an abnormally rapid heartbeat. And the, the abnormally rapid beats are classified into what we could classify as arrhythmias. Dr. Peter Ravellis is a cardiologist and an attending physician at New York Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn. He's the doctor that diagnosed Mazzola's condition. Could you take some deep breaths right now? Folks, for instance, are allowed to have a rapid heartbeat that is uh, normal. In other words, if you uh, run, if you're anxious and nervous, if you're very hot or very cold, your heart will beat faster. Come, let me check your pressure. When you have arrhythmias or abnormal heartbeats, they tend to originate from different segments of the heart that they shouldn't. And obviously, they cause someone to be symptomatic besides feeling pounding or that rapid heartbeat. Uh, they can feel dizzy, they can be short of breath, they can have chest pains. Perspiration, uneasiness, uh, very, very frightened, and um, just a general feeling of not well-being. In Mazzola's case, he was diagnosed with an abnormal arrhythmia about seven years ago after a frightening incident. I was driving when it was happening to me, and, and I was just about to pull over and go to a fire station and tell them to get me to a hospital. So uh, I uh, managed to get home and when I got home I was like a wreck and my wife, she had to take me to the emergency room. Fortunately for Mazzola, he sought help right from the start, which doctors say is the correct choice. I came to Dr. Vallis and uh, we took some uh, tests and uh, that's what he determined and uh, put me on some medication which seemed to help immediately. There are different ways to diagnose the condition. Most can be done right in the doctor's office. Just taking their pulse, sometimes you can tell. You can tell whether the rhythm is regular, whether there's skips or extra beats, pauses. You can clearly tell how fast the, the, you know, the heart rate is. A lot of information can be obtained just by applying light pressure on the wrist side of your hand. And this is a good initial assessment uh, if somebody's complaining of a rapid heartbeat. So how was mine? Yours was excellent. Excellent, excellent. There are a host of other tests as well. Obviously doing a cardiogram, we can do something called a rhythm strip where we actually look at the rhythm itself, just a prolonged assessment of, of, of the rhythm of the heart. We could do monitoring, which could be overnight, 24-hour monitoring, where a patient wears a device Arrhythmias can occur in both adults and children and affect both males and females. Unlike some conditions, they can have multiple causes and triggers. So having coronary artery disease, blocked arteries can trigger rapid abnormal heartbeats. Having a weak heart muscle can do that also. Uh, having um, uh, pulmonary problems, having an infection, having endocrine problems like an overactive thyroid. Is tachycardia something that a person inherits? Many of them are, especially the arrhythmias, the abnormal rapid heartbeats. I'm trying to feel for any un unusual movement in the neck that could signify other problems that go beyond uh, arrhythmic heart disease. Depending upon the origin, treatment options may vary, but often begin with lifestyle adjustments like reducing stress and avoiding alcohol and tobacco. Excessive drinking obviously can affect uh, the heart and, and affect a rapid heartbeat in many ways. It could lead to dehydration. It could weaken the heart muscle, and by doing that, the heart can be exposed, you know, at risk of many types of arrhythmias and rapid heartbeats. Uh, smoking in and of itself definitely is a stressor. It has, you know, obviously uh, tobacco has a number of dangerous chemicals. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, I. I I, maybe I overindulge when I eat, but that's about it. Uh, Gene, perfect. It looks like you lost some more weight this month. Excellent, excellent. Extra mile. 
Uh, then obviously there's pharmacologic treatments. There's a multitude of different types of medicines that uh, uh, will either serve to break the arrhythmia, to abort it, or to slow down the, the rate so that the heart is not beating as fast. Um, and more, most importantly, if you can treat the underlying cause, if you have a clear precipitating cause and you treat it, that sometimes terminates an arrhythmia also. And then there's more advanced and invasive treatments. As long as I take my medication as prescribed, which in my case is three times a day, um, I don't have a problem at all. For others, the solution might be more complicated or perhaps simpler. Either way, it's important to find out. Most abnormal fast heartbeats tend to be dangerous. And if not treated appropriately, if not managed appropriately, could cause further problems. Clearly, they could damage the heart. They could precipitate heart attacks and strokes. Some arrhythmias could totally cause the heart to stop beating. In Mazzola's case, he's doing well. Your pulse is regular, and I'm glad that you're continuing to do well in our uh, present medications. Thank you. For Health Beat Brooklyn, I'm Sherry Carabin. Follow us on Twitter at BK Independent TV. 